Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have a watercolour project using stamps. And the stamps I'm using, this set is from Close to My Heart. And it's beautiful. It has a lot of lovely images on it. I've had this stamp set for quite a while. This is the first time I've used it. I've already created a card using this stamp and a beautiful shimmery effect. And I have a video of that on my channel. That's the last video that I made and I can show you how to achieve that shimmery effect with watercolor paper. I'm going to be using the same paper today and my Princeton Snap Round Number no. Two brush and some water and some ink tense pencils, which are watercolor pencils. Any watercolour pencils would work for this, but ink tense pencils are particularly good. There is a set of 12. I'm only going to be using three colours. I'm going to be using a brown, a yellow and a red. I have my Versafine Onyx Black ink for stamping. And I have a Deckled Rectangle die. This comes from a set of dies from Stampin' Up. And this is the Deckled Rectangles dies. I'm going to cut that now on some watercolour paper. And this watercolour paper is 90 pounds. I got it from the dollar store. It's an inexpensive paper. And I'm just using masking tape to get it exactly right. I'm using as small a sheet of paper as I can because watercolour paper can be expensive and I don't want to waste any. So I'm readjusting that so that it will cut perfectly. And I'm changing out my plates. I have a new set of plates for my Big Shot machine, so I'm using those today. And you can see how precise you can get using this masking tape technique. There's a sliver on each of the edges there, and it cut perfectly. I've cut two of those pieces, one for the outside and a layering piece for the inside. And I'm lining up the Santa image and the little message at the top, the little greeting. And there's a little evergreen bow at the bottom. And I'm going to pop that on. Line them up where I think they look good. And I'm putting them in a stamping platform. And when I close the door, I can check to make sure that it's straight. I can use those grid lines to make sure everything is perfect. Now, when you're working on watercolour paper, it can be difficult to get a good image. This is cold press watercolour paper, and I love it because it has a gorgeous texture. So I'm using my Versafine Onyx Black ink, which is good for fine details. And it's a waterproof ink as well. And I'm using my tissue to rub over the areas on the stamp. And I can see that that evergreen bow has stamped perfectly. I still need to get some impression with the rest of the Santa. And with watercolour paper, it's different from working with smooth cardstock. You need to really give it some love, give it a few presses with a stamp positioner. And you don't need a whole lot of extra ink. I'm going to put a little bit more ink around the belly but I'm not putting ink anywhere else. It's just where he's quite pale. And the mistake I've seen a lot of people make with working on watercolor paper and stamping is they keep adding ink, keep adding ink. But what I'm doing here, I'm just looking at the areas that need a little bit more pressure and applying pressure with that tissue over the top to those areas rather than adding lots and lots of ink because if you do that, you'll end up with a smudgy mess. And I think that image is perfect. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm bringing in my water jar and my poppy red ink tense pencil. This is one that comes in the 12 set, which is a perfect color for Santa's coat. And I'm going to start by coloring in where the dark areas are on the stamp. And I'm going to use that number two round Princeton snap brush and just a little water. You can see me dabbing off the excess water on that paper towel. 
and just drawing that pigment from the outside into the inside. So it's darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. And this is a wonderful way to get an introduction to watercolour painting. I'm using a very, very small amount of water. And this is actually a technique called line and wash. And what we're using for our line is a stamped image. If you're looking for a no stress way to get into watercolour and get started, I would recommend you get yourself some ink tense pencils or any watercolour pencils really. The thing that I really like about the ink tense pencils is they are intense in their pigment load. So they're very bright and the colours are nice and clear. The other thing I like about ink tense pencils is they are permanent once they're dry. So once I finish this card, even if I sprinkled a few spots of water on it accidentally or somebody picked it up at, from their mailbox and it had been raining, this ink is permanent. So that is a really wonderful quality that the ink tense pencils have. It's a very relaxing way to enjoy watercolouring. Now I'm just moving the stamp set up in the bottom corner there so that I can look at the image and reference that. You can see I'm not using very much water. Most of the water I tap off onto the paper towel. So my brush is just damp. And that means that the color doesn't run outside of the lines. I'll bring that camera in a bit closer so that you can see more of the detail. I'm going to pop on some music. You can relax and watch while I continue to colour this lovely Santa image. I've been good this year Make your list and check it twice I'll leave you a note right here Underneath the Christmas lights Carols and bells None of them help I still feel blue I just want need a fancy watch You can give the elves a break No, you can't make it in the shop And you can't put it on your sleigh You know me so well that nobody else can do what you do I just want to Your ribbon and bow I don't need that extra stuff Oh, I just want to fall in love Santa, I've been good this year Make your list and check it twice I'll leave you a note right here Underneath the Christmas lights I'm using a colour called Baked Earth, 
which makes a great skin tone if you just use a very light amount of it. So I've only colored this in very lightly and it makes a nice flesh color. I'm going to use the same color baked earth, but use it in a much more strong pigmentation by coloring it in more heavily on the Santa's sack and on his boots as well. Just putting a little bit in one of the toys there in the baked earth, which is a lovely brown color. It's sort of a reddish brown, a warm brown. I have a color here called Sun Yellow, and this is a very tiny amount of yellow. Just in the toys in the sack, there are some jingle bells on his sack. I want that yellow as well. And I'm using yellow on the buckles of his belt and shoes so that it looks a little bit like pale gold. And again, just using a damp brush and a very small amount of water, and he's almost done. Now I have some red cardstock that I'm going to mount this Santa on and the colour I have is called Real Red from Stampin' Up but any cardstock that matches your red of the suit would work really well. I love the way these deckled rectangles make it look as though it's expensive watercolour paper just because of that lovely deckled edge. You can see the details in that colouring and it was so relaxing to colour in this way. It's a really foolproof method. I just love it. You could use any cold pressed paper for this method. This is not cotton paper. This is a very inexpensive paper. But it works well. Now the next colour I'm bringing back in is the poppy red and I'm going to do a technique called glazing. Now this is a technique that watercolour artists use with painting where you do the same layer over the top 
So the same layer that I did before, and you'll see how this actually intensifies the color in his suit. Just by adding another pigment load, you can see the color gets brighter again. These pencils are well worth the investment. And I'd only start with a 12 set. You can mix the colors as well if you're trying to make um, other colors. You can put them onto a palette and add water on the palette and mix them on a palette and you can get different colors. So you can mix an orange from red and yellow. You can mix a green from blue and yellow and a purple from blue and red. And they're great for traveling. It's a real no mess method of painting in watercolor. Now here's this real red cardstock and I'm going to adhere the panel with some of this glue. This is my favorite glue for paper crafting. It's Tombow glue. The reason I love it is it gives you a bit of wiggle room. So you can put it on your card and you only need a small amount. I like to put dots in the corners. I'm not using a lot of it. I'm not really squeezing the tube as I go. I'm just letting the glue fall out via gravity, I guess. And Watch me when I put it on the inside. You can see it gives me a chance to wiggle it around a bit and get it absolutely straight. So if you use something like double-sided tape, it's really hard to move it once you've popped it on. I'm going to put the cover on now. We're almost to the end and I've put a tissue on my desk because I've been doing a lot of painting on this desk this week, a lot of large watercolour pieces. And um, I don't know what is left behind. So let's make sure we don't get this panel dirty at the last minute. And that red just sets off the whole card. I'm really happy with that color combination. And it's quite simple. It was just poppy red for the pencils, real red for the cardstock, uh, baked earth for the pencils and using it in a very dilute solution for the flesh color and some sun yellow. So I'm going to put that with a white envelope and I just love it. I hope you enjoyed today's program. If you did, I would so appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel and leave me a comment. Let me know if you've tried using Intense Pencils or if you'd like to give them a try. Have a wonderful day. I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.